Before I begin with the video, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you're unfamiliar with Skillshare, Skillshare is a great place to learn your craft online with an online learning community so you can network with peers and discover new opportunities. The best part about Skillshare is that you can take as many classes as you want in lots of different categories without having to pay for each one. Skillshare has many categories to choose from like film, fashion, design, and photography to name a few. A favorite class that I found helpful is the Final Cut Pro 10 Color Correction for Beginners by Benjamin Halsall who also has dozens of other classes. You should also check out one of Skillshare's top film and video class all about creating a modern cinematic documentary by Dan Dan Liu, a documentary filmmaker and cinematographer. Skillshare is less than $10 a month, but you can get a two month free trial by visiting the link down in the description of this video. Now let's get started with the tutorial. What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another video. I just wanted to make an After Effects tutorial uh, with the 3D tracking effect, which is really, really, really cool. Something that Final Cut Pro 10 cannot do, which is sad. But anyways, this is what I'm gonna be showing you guys in today's video, and it's really, really cool. This is being tracked, as you can see, and it's very easy to do. All right, so I'm gonna show you the effect that I've done, and then we're gonna start, so I'm gonna push play. And this is what I've created here. It's very, very easy and very simple. As you can see, the man is just dancing or whatever. And then we have like a freeze frame effect that's just being still like kind of still there the whole time. And it just looks really, really cool. So first things first, you want to create a new project. I'm going to go into file. I'm going to go into new and do new project. I'm going to click don't save. And then what you want to do is you want to go to new composition from footage and then you want to find uh, your video. So once you import your video, it's going to look like this. You're going to have a composition, which is kind of like your project. And then you're going to have your video right here. I'm going to push play so you guys can see what this would look like. This video is not filmed on a tripod. Just letting you guys know that as you can see, there's a little bit of movement going on. And if you keep looking, you can see that that's definitely not on a tripod. So all we're going to do now is just find points where we want to add a freeze frame. So all you're going to do is to skim through with the playhead and I'm going to add one right over here. So I'm going to go into composition. I'm going to go into save frame as and go into file. Then what you want to do is just leave everything how it is. So all you have to do from this point is go back to your composition. So click on this right here, which should be your video. It should be the title. And then what you want to do is press, um, if you go into, don't move the time head yet. You want to go into composition or layer and then go into new. Um, make sure you have your clip selected. And then you want to go into a layer. Then you want to go into the markers and add a marker. And then you want to go into another point where you want to add another freeze frame. I want to add one right there. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to add a marker first. So I'm going to go into layer. I'm going to go into, uh, if I go down, I'm going to go into markers. I'm going to go into add marker. So all I have to do now is go back to composition at the top on the menu bar, go into save frame as and go to file. So now I'm going to do one more just for the sake of the video. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do it where he ends it just to keep it nice and simple for you guys. So right there. So I'm going to go into uh, layer markers, add marker to add a little marker here. So we know where to actually add the uh, files to after. So we're going to go into composition, then we're going to go to save frame as and click file. So now once we have all of our settings here, we're going to go into, if you look on, you see like a little square and they're going to see number one, we're going to go next to output module and we're going to click this little arrow next to that. And right here where it says post render action, we want to import that. So when we save the file, it's just going to immediately import it back into our project. So we don't have to go looking for it. So do the same thing for every, uh, every uh, freeze frame that you've created. So I only have three so far. So I'm going to go into output module. I'm going to go into the post render action and I'm going to go into import and I'm going to do the same thing for the last one. Go into output module, go down to post render action and click import. Then click on the render button over to the right. Click on that button. As you can see here, if we go into the project, you're gonna have one, two, and three Photoshop files. Go back to the composition, and then we're gonna work on the first one. So this is going to be our first frame here. So select the first file, the Photoshop file, click and drag this into your settings right above the video, and drag it like that. Okay, if it looks like this, right click on the video, go into the, um, I think it's going to be in transform, Okay, and then we're gonna go into fit to comp. You can do comp uh, height, width, or the composition. I'm gonna do fit to comp. So now it's gonna fit it to the full entire window. Okay, so that's what you wanna do. Make sure the playhead is right on this arrow like that. 
And then what we're going to do now is gonna, we're going to mask him out. So we're going to go into the pen tool by going up at the top right here in the tools next to the horizontal type tool and the, rect the rectangle tool. So click on the pen tool, zoom in onto this here. It might be a little blurry. That's just because of the render settings and everything. And then all you got to do is click and drag to make your selections. You might not be able to see the little lines here just because it's in like a dark green for some reason. You can always change the color of this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to quickly select uh, this guy here. And if you want to move around, all you have to do is click the space bar, click and hold, and then you're going to have a little hand. That way you can uh, kind of like pan around the video. All right, so once you are getting close, you're going to have a little circle next to the pen tool. Click on that, and this will save the selection. So all you got to do now to zoom out, click on this little 200% uh, button right here, the down arrow, and go back to fit. Once you're at this point, all you have to do now is we're going to create or we're going to analyze the uh, 3D. So we're going to click on this button here on the video. And then what you want to do is you want to go into the, if we go onto the effects and presets, we're going to go down to tracker. And then from this point, what we want to do is we want to click on the, I think it's track camera. So click on this button and then you're going to go into the advanced and then you're going to go into where it says detailed analysis. Click on this button to make sure it's checked. And then you're going to see, you should see like a little progress bar right over here. It should be like 0% or like 20% once it goes through. It's going to analyze. There's 327 frames. This might take a while. Um, usually for me, it took like, I don't know, five minutes, three minutes. All right. So once After Effects finishes, the uh, tracking and analyzing of your whole entire scene, it's going to look something like this, okay? We're gonna move the time head right over here. This is where I want to where I want it to start. So I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna click create null and camera. okay? What you want to do now is you want to go into the track null here. Press P for the position tool uh, or to enter the position, click on the position, go to edit copy or command C to copy the position of this. Then you want to go into the Photoshop file, press P for the position, click on the position and then click command V to paste. So now you're going to have another copy of it or of the freeze frame. Go back to project. Um, and then what you want to do from here is you want to go into the pan behind the anchor point tool, click on this and zoom out to see where the anchor point tool is. Uh, I'm just gonna click on the move tool. And I'm just gonna move this if I zoom in here. Actually, I'm gonna go into the anchor point tool and I'm gonna move this right over here. Then I'm gonna go back to the move tool and I'm gonna click and drag this piece right back here like that. Once you're at this point, you wanna make sure that the Photoshop file here, let me show you, is selected. You wanna make sure that you turn on the 3D, the 3D option by clicking this to make sure that there's a box. So now you can see that there's a green and a red for the X, Y, as well as a Z. So now if I go back and I push play, it's going to sort of like animate, not animate, but it's going to go with the movement of the scene. So now all we have to do is go and click on the clip, go to the end and trim this to the first frame. Okay, so it disappears after he goes into that frame. So if I push play, it's gonna look like this. Sweet, so all we're gonna do now is do the same thing. So right over here, okay, make sure that the playhead is right on that arrow. We're gonna click off of this and we're gonna go on to the next one. So click and drag this right above the track new one. So now we have this one. If it's not framed correctly, all you gotta do is right click on that file, transform, then you wanna go to fit to comp. Okay, sweet, so once you render this out by just going into preview, you can easily render this out so it looks a little nicer. And then just move the, the time head back and then zoom in and then you can make your uh, your mask masking with the pen tool by going over on the top and then you just wanna mask this out like we did with the first one. All right, so once you're at this point and you finished your selection, all you have to do is go back to where it says 200%, go back to fit, and then what you wanna do is you're gonna have your selection, same thing, what you want to do is we're gonna click on the video here. We're gonna go into the effect right here, effect control, click on 3D camera tracker next to the effects to see the points. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the selection tool or press V. Then we wanna kind of hover over um, our, our subject and we're gonna right click and click on create null. So once you're at this point, all you have to do is press P on the keyboard again, select the position, copy that by pressing command C. Then you wanna select the uh, file with the next freeze frame, which is this Photoshop file. Press P 
to enter that like that. Press P again. You're going to have position. Press Command V to copy the position from the null, which is the 3D tracked null. And then you're going to pretty much um, paste that onto that um, freeze frame. So now all you have to do is go into, make sure you enable the 3D. Click this box. So now you're going to have this. Then all you're going to do is go into the pan behind or the anchor point tool. Then you, all you're going to do is click and move this to make sure that's centered around this guy's body. Go back to the selection tool and then you can use the X, the Y or the Z to position this exactly how you want this. So something like this. So now if I go back and I push play, it'll look like this, which looks really, really cool. It's moving along with the movement of the camera, so if that makes sense. So now we're going to go to the end. We're going to trim this down to our time head or this point here where we added the marker. That's why it's good to add the marker so we can be exact right here. Sweet. So now if I go back and I click off of this and I push play, it's going to look like this, which looks really, really cool, guys. Now, if there's a lot of movement going on, the better it's going to look. And if you're panning around and stuff, this effect is going to look absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm going to show you a preview or the preview you've already probably seen in the beginning of the video um, of where it was inspired from. Now, when you're ready to export, all you have to do is just make sure that this little blue outline is highlighted on the actual timeline and not like over here or over here. So make sure that this is selected. Then go into composition, go to add to render queue. Then you're gonna scroll all the way down to make sure and make sure that you have this one here. It says this one's titled Pixels Videos or Pixels Videos. And then you're gonna have render settings. If you click the down arrow, you have other options. I'm gonna leave it on best settings. You have the output module. We have other ones here. We have lossless, we have uh, QuickTime, and so on. And then we're gonna click on lossless. And then you're going to have format. You have QuickTime. I think on the newest version, I think this is After Effects 2019, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, if you go into the format options and you go to video codec, usually we'll have like H.264. For some reason, it's not on here. I'm not sure if it has to do with my project settings or the composition settings. But if yours does have uh, MP4 or MPEG4 or uh, another one besides QuickTime, Select that one and go to format options and select the video codec to H.264. Then click render and your video is now being rendered and being exported for your amazing masterpiece that you've just created. And like I said, you don't need to have a tripod with this. The point being is that it's 3D. So you can move, you can pan around and do everything. You can be very creative with this. All right, so this is what the video looks like. So I'm going to kind of like zoom this out a little bit like that. So I'm gonna push play. And this is what your video looks like once it's exported. As you can see, the guy is following the movement of the camera, which is so freaking cool, guys. I don't know about you, but this looks really cool. And it's just fun. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want more tutorials like this one, especially with After Effects, drop a like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on a video like this one. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.